All right, hey, my friends, there is more developing in the Middle East as Afghanistan continues to spiral from one level of catastrophe to the next. There's a suicide bombing that just killed, I think, 11 or 13 people. There's been gun uh, fights around Kabul, and the Taliban is pressing in more and more and making sure, putting ultimatums on our troops, now commanding America, that you must be out by the 31st. This is a deadline that Joe Biden uh, set to be out by uh, the 31st. Now, a planned withdrawal from Afghanistan was always something that Americans wanted. Troops don't want to be there forever. America doesn't want to be there forever. But what we left was a security contingent. That's what we want, a security force that's able to basically assist the Afghanistan military as we built up their military forces over the last couple of decades so that they could be able to defend themselves. We also did it in such a way that they're dependent on our support. So they have various vehicles, machines, aircraft that we have to continue to service so that they're able to even use this stuff. So when we all of a sudden withdrew, even uh, started to withdraw, even our security force they freaked out. And, uh, you know, whether you judge them for that or not is neither here nor there. It just makes us look like we don't keep our word. It makes us look weak in the eyes of Afghanistans, who now are just going to be butchered by Taliban. Taliban has encircled Kabul, and specifically the airport. Uh, our U.S. Embassy just put out a statement to American citizens that are trapped in Afghanistan right now that will be left, even according to the Biden administration, they may be left they're saying, don't come to the airports, Taliban have it surrounded, bed down in place, wait for further instructions. In other words, you're on your own, have fun dodging Taliban knives. And so this is a disaster. I truly believe history is going to remember this military fiasco right now for what it is. Uh, I had a friend recently say, this is about to be like Pol Pot's Cambodian killing fields. And that's what it looks like. And meanwhile, Meanwhile, the legacy media, CNN, ABC, Jen Psaki, is doing damage control on this, and the Biden administration seems intent to continue to sh uh, shift the conversation to the coronavirus. That's it. Again, the coronavirus. And because I'm all ticked off, let me just mention something about the coronavirus as we go. If you are very old or you have uh, pre-existing conditions, this virus can kill you. It is serious. I already had it. It wasn't fun. Uh, I got over it. I got some antibodies now, and I'm not really afraid of the virus. And they got a new strand out, and I'm kind of like, all right, I'll take that in turn too, and I'm, I'm just not afraid. You may be. That's fine. You get to be, but I'm not afraid of it. But my problem here is, is I'm just kind of looking experientially, not, not at the headlines of CNN, which is making huge amounts of money off pumping this virus, or the government, which is getting more power than ever thought possible before through this crisis. <clears throat> what I notice is, is personally, when I ask anyone how many people they know personally that have died of the coronavirus, people always tell me zero, one, two, or three. That's what I, I encountered. I've literally asked over the last year about uh, hundreds and hundreds of people. It is the most common question I ask people. When I sit down at an airport, I'll ask them I'll, uh, if corona anything comes up. They're like, they got their nose hanging out. And I'm like, hey, your nose is hanging out. You're not really afraid of corona, are you? You're just afraid of people, right? Uh, and so I'll just churn up a little conversation and stuff and all in kind of uh, a, a nice spirit. But I'll ask them, how many people do you know that have died of corona? Now, I personally, I know one who has died of corona. In over a year and a half, I just know one who has died of corona. <clears throat> Some people I meet every once in a while, I'm shocked, and someone knows like five. Online, everyone will claim to know like a thousand. So check down below in the comments and be like, whatever, I know 30,000 30, people that have died of a Yeah, 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 sure. But experientially, whenever I look someone in the eyeballs, friend, family, or strangers, zero, one, two, or three. And really in a pandemic, we should know hundreds and hundreds. And now what's disgusting about it, and the reason that I'm bringing it up isn't because I want to talk about the virus or any of that stuff. What I want to talk about is it's being used to now cover up a real, real disaster that's happening. There's about to be a cleaning house of the Taliban as they have control. They're telling us to get out or else. And as soon as we leave on the 31st here in just a few days, 
they're going to go radio silent and just start killing anyone that's worked with Americans over the last couple decades. It's already starting. If you don't believe me, look down below. I'm going to have links to all kinds of good news sources. And so, uh, uh, yeah, check it out. Also, I'd say there's stuff that we can be doing to help in one way or the other. I, I was desperately trying to get over across the pond. I've been to Afghanistan quite a few times. I thought I had a uh, a lift and uh, that fell through. Uh, but regardless, and don't read too much into that. It was just more of a, a touchdown, help people load up a plane and then get out. So don't think I was, you know, uh, thinking, you know, anything uh, crazy there. Just want to help. I want to help. And I see something horrible going down. I'm like, what else? What, what can I do? Well, I'm praying I'm trying to learn as much as I can. My wife and I just gave generously to the Nazarene Fund, and I believe, uh, you know, Glenn Beck, who's working with them, allowed us to uh, know that this was even going on in conjunction with the Daily Wire. They just exfilled, uh, I think it was 1,200 personnel from Afghanistan. So that's really, really awesome. Good. Awesome. And uh, me and my wife donated some money to that. There's also Samaritan's Purse who I was talking to uh, this morning, and they're working in relief. So I have some stuff down below in the links if you want to get involved and help any. Uh, this is a disaster. It's a lot of Afghan uh, refugees, uh, people, uh, Afghanis who have been shipped over here. I believe, uh, I thought I saw a report, and now it's just anecdotal, but I saw a report where 100 were flagged for being on terrorist watch lists. So people that are coming here, I'm like, awesome. It just gets, it keeps going from bad to worse to worse to worse. And meanwhile, since the death of journalism, all the the media outlets that you grew up with are all just super suspect of like, I just don't trust them anymore. Uh, yeah, anyway. Anyway, but my man Tucker Carlson there over at Fox News, he's, he's a champ, bro. He's a champ. Anyway, I got some work cited down below if y'all want to check that out. Let's learn. I'm not claiming to have everything figured out. I'm just a guy that knows enough to know we should be very upset about this, and then Biden should absolutely be impeached over this. So uh, anyway, guys, train hard, train smart. Uh, stay free. Love you guys.